Another day, another video. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today we're watching the Big Bang Favorite. This is a sixth episode of the eighth season. Hope you guys have been enjoying it so far. If you like to watch today's full episode, it is available for in the link in the description below. Just click on it, put the password in, and enjoy. So last episode, interesting turn of events. You know, the guys who wanted to spend time together, basically coming up with new inventions and, you know, trying to relive some of their heydays where they come up with some amazing designs. You know, at the start of the episode, it was explained that somebody's created some technology that will charge your phone with a friction as you walk and Leonard was saying mate we had this design years ago why didn't we follow it up and then obviously they were saying well because you got distracted since Penny was uh, you know around and stuff like that and he was like look you know what let's put our heads together let's have no distractions from the females we'll sit down we'll do it and we'll create something new maybe we'll get rich well they realised that it actually wasn't the girls that was distracting them. As they just got older, you know, they easily, um, you know, led into different directions. They start talking about one thing, let's watch a movie, start doing another thing, let's watch a movie. So, do you know what I mean? They come to the realisation that maybe they're not, um, you know, the girls are not the issue, it's just them themselves. As they progressed older, you know, their attention span's kind of changing. And interestingly, you know, the girls was like, look, if they're going to spend some time together, we're going to spend some time together. Let's go to Vegas, let's get drunk, let's have a good time. Now, interestingly, over here in Vegas... Penny ends up getting a text message saying that, you know, her test or whatever it is for work, her, um, you know, I guess kind of like welcome assessment is, so to speak, is, is going to be on Monday. It's kind of been fast-tracked ahead. And instead of going out partying, you know, she actually decided to stay home and stood there. What a big step for her. So the two girls was calling her a nerd and he was laughing and he was loving and they went out and they got drunk and Penny stayed home. She managed to get revenge on them, though, because in the morning when they're hungover drunk, she opened the blinds, Penny's red hair, bikini, loving it. She's going to go to the pool. She's going to drink and have a good time while they're going to die and rot in the, in the room. So, you know, big step forward for Penny, to be honest. I like it. She's putting uh, all her efforts into a new role, and it's nice to see. And hopefully she reaps in the rewards. So it's good, good stuff. Thanks for checking out today's episode. Hope you guys enjoy it. If you do, please smash the like, really helps out. Subscribe if you're new. And as always, let's jump into today's episode. <laughs> Fiance's job is to go out and flirt with doctors looking like that while you sit here. She doesn't flirt with doctors. Yeah, it's all very professional. You know when you bend over, I can see down your shirt. Okay, good. Speaking of new careers, how are things going with Dark Matter, Sheldon? Uh, you know, I'd have to say it's the most exciting time in the history of the field. Oh, what's going on? I started doing it. Government funded the biggest experiment yet to detect Dark Matter. They're sending research teams down into abandoned salt mines. The thought of you two in a mine is kind of funny. It's like a cat riding a Roomba. <laughs> yeah, if they get scared, they'll have those hats with the lights on them, because down there, it's night-night all the time. Are they making fun of us? Yep. I miss the old days when I couldn't tell. So, one of my favorite video games of all time is called Shadow of the Colossus, and they came out with a new version for PS3 with better graphics. I finally got the chance to play it, and for some reason, it just wasn't as good as the first one. I'm sorry, I was thinking about work. Well, you know how they gave me the company car? Didn't make sense to have two, so I sold the other one. Oh, no, I... Did you? Yeah, and there's your money back. Now we're even. Come on, Leonard, I know the car was a thoughtful gesture, and I really appreciate it, but it didn't make sense to have both. What should I have done? Taken a picture of us in the car and put it in a pink frame with puffy paint around it that says, Best fiancé ever. He'd like it. Yeah, <laughs> he'd like it. Well, good, because that's what I did! <laughs> <laughs> Look at his face, though. He's loving it. Ew, that, that is so sweet. No, it's not that sweet. I paid for the frame with your money and then got a massage. Oh. Look, this is silly. So you don't need the car, but you could use it to buy yourself something else, like a new purse to put all this money in. Okay, I don't want this to turn into a fight. No, I don't either. Great. Thank you. Can you pass the salt, please? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually good. In my mind, that broke the tension. The thing is, right, let's be honest, in that situation there, None of them are wrong, but again, the what should happen is Leonard should take that money and then maybe reinvest it without knowing into different things. So, for example, he never gave her the car, so it was an IOU. I get one up her, you know what I mean? Like, you should always be in my deck because I got it. Yet. He actually got it because he was supporting his girlfriend and she needed the car and he was like, look, I've got some spare cash. You need a car, boom, you have it. I support you, do you know what I mean? That's fine. You don't do things. Sheldon, see, Sheldon does things that he has to reciprocate again or something mutually equal back. You know what I mean? I got you a gift for $100. You got me one. Do you know what I mean? 
xyz but these it was just literally you needed it and your boyfriend i want to do something nice there you go now penny side i totally agree she's been given a company car while draft two i'm potentially going to be in that same situation i've got a car it's decent i like it i've had it for uh, a few years but it's like mate if i'm going to get given one regardless of whether it's a, a shed on wheels or it's the best car ever why would i have my own car why would i pay for a, a, a do you know what i mean a car so bin it off now she's like i never paid for this car he did let's just say it was 500 dollars. i've got 500 dollars now do you know what i mean it was never mine in the first place you've done something good for me there you go have it back i appreciate it now keep passing it towards penny kind of guilting her or whatever what he should do is just take it and like look how about we spend this on us let's go for a weekend away let's go to the cinema let's go and get some food do you know what i mean like we'll use this as date money to invest in us too do you know what i'm saying like instead of pass back 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 just get it, use it, reinvest it where you both can have uh, fun from it. This mind is capable of advanced multitasking. Yeah, currently, I'm attempting to solve the Penrose conjecture. I'm composing my Nobel acceptance speech for when I've solved the Penrose conjecture. <laughs> and I'm wondering how mermaids have babies. The guys might be right. It sounds pretty rough down there. For starters, it's very humid and about 100 degrees. I'm from Texas, and you're from India. We're no strangers to the fragrant armpit. Next. Oh, you have to be down there for 12 hours at a time. I have to be somewhere. Before we pass up on an incredible opportunity, I was thinking about when Howard is training to go to space, they put him in a simulated environment. Yeah, you're suggesting that we recreate the conditions of the mind to see if we can handle it. Just Google hot, dark, and moist to see what comes up. <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if he's getting taken into HR watching videos like that on a company computer. But yeah, you know, Sheldon, he's all for everything. But if it's bowel movements, if it's not his scheduled time, as we know, mate, he's not all for it. I was hoping we could talk about the money again. Oh, see, just forget about it. No, 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 hear me out. I know things got a little weird last night. The money in a joint account. It'll be our first money together. We can use it for the wedding, the honeymoon, whatever. Well, that's kind of what I said. I love that. Better? you do I'm not just a genius in bed you sure are baby <laughs> so you want to be alone i want you to know i get why you don't want the money you've got this new job you're excited about being financially independent and i am nothing but proud of you i just think that maybe you're a little hung up on the money because i'm less reliant on you now and that's a little scary maybe i tried to do something nice and maybe you had a problem with it because of your control issues or maybe now that I'm no longer an out-of-work actress who can't pay for her own dinner, that makes you a little insecure. Stupid to fight over money. Yeah, I'm sorry, too. Oh, we're about to share the rest of our lives together. If it's our money, who cares who has it? Ugh, you're right. Who cares? <laughs> Get that money out of my back pocket or I will break your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, what he just said there about putting it into the wedding, perfect, honestly. That was even better than what I said. That's what they should do. And also, why would you be insecure like she doesn't need you anymore for money? To be honest, that's great. I'd love to have 200, 300 in my pocket every month that I could go and spend with the guys or just go on vacation or, you know, anything that I wanted, the games or football or whatnot, even just betting, gambling. Who cares? You know what I mean? If you've got extra money in your pocket that you don't have to pass out that you've been used to, laughing, it's a win situation for you. All this time, I never knew there were steam tunnels down here. Most universities have them. When I was an undergrad, I spent three days in one pledging a sorority. Well, according to my research, the steam tunnels below this access point should be the closest analog to the mine. Amy, this walkie-talkie is yours. If we run into any problems, I'll contact you. Admittedly, this brushes up against my well-known aversions to heat, small places, going below floor level, dampness, hatches, ladders, darkness, echoes. And eliminating in Home Depot buckets. I'm sweating already. <laughs> yeah, is the person beneath you allow me to say, I know. Uh, the real answer isn't much better. 102 degrees. Oh, of course. What did you guys want to talk about? Well, you know, now that we're engaged, we had some questions about how you handle money as a couple. I told you they weren't going to ask us to swing with them. Well, do you guys ever fight over money? Sure, sometimes. I mean, it could be a little awkward since I make so much more money than Howie. You didn't have to say so much more. <laughs> well, I didn't have to, but for the sake of accuracy, I felt that I should. Uh, I brought a lot of significant assets into the relationship, too. Like what? Your incomplete set of Star Trek collector plates? For information, I just bought the last one I needed on eBay. Three minutes left in the auction, and it was a mint condition Scotty from a smoke-free home. <laughs> How much, Howie? Not a lot. <gasps> How much? 
Sure. Right. Like I would swing with him. <laughs> but to be fair though, right, Bernadette, the way she talks about money, is kind of belittling to Howard, you know. I'm on Howard's side in that situation. Like, you, I mean, you've heard it from me before. Like, to me in a relationship, you have your money, I have my money, yeah? Don't really care how much you make. You shouldn't really care as much as I make as long as together, collectively, the bills are paid. You could have 700 in your bank left. I could have 300. Do whatever you want with that. Yeah, it's your money. That's your job. Do you know what I mean? As long as we pay for our bills, gas, water, electric, house and food, the, the rest of it, if you wanted to go and waste $500 buying a, you know, a collectible, go do it. It's your money. Do you know what I'm saying? But the fact is, whoever makes the most money, they should not always be asking, what have you spent? Why have you done that? Why have you done that? Or I make way more money than you and making them feel insecure all the time because... It would do, you know, to be honest, a relationship to me should be even. Somebody could pay more bills than the other if they earn more money. You could do it, it you know what I mean? Say, for example, Bernadette owns 40% more money than his wage, for example. Maybe you could pro route the bills so that, like, you know, he pays 400, she pays 600. Do you know what I mean? Or something like that. You could just flip it and just alternate in terms of percentages. But you should never kind of look that. She always says it, and it kind of like looks down on Howard. I actually don't like it the way she does that. Let's set up the equipment. It'll help take your mind off of it. Miners often sing mining songs to keep their spirits up. It's dark as a dungeon, as damp as the dew. That's pretty. Where the dangers are doubled and the pleasures are few. <laughs> then I'll look from the door of my heavenly home. And pity the miner that mines my poor bones. I mean, talk about wasted money. What about the late fees on our credit card because somebody didn't pay the bill on time? Well, maybe I would have paid it if I wasn't also doing everything else around here. Look at my torture. <laughs> Do the dishes. There's a star right there. That was a pity star. Putting water in the roasting pan and leaving it in the sink is not doing the dishes. That pan had to soak, and you know it. I usually don't. I like lemon bars, but these, these are really good. <laughs> so, as Hannah Montana, Miley was a world-famous pop star. But then she would take off a wig and go to school like a normal girl. You guys doing okay down there? I told you to use the walkie-talkie. Please keep this channel clear for emergencies. Thank you. This is a simulation. We have to survive on the supplies we brought. <laughs> Should have asked her to get some funyuns. A mile below the surface of the earth. What if we brought them down with us? Funyuns. <laughs> some York peppermint patties, a couple of Dr. Peppers, and run to Best Buy and see if they have a portable DVD player and season one of a show called Hannah Montana. Don't, don't apologize. Yeah, it just makes it a lot harder to pretend it never happened. Sure, there's still a lot of pressure on guys to be providers. So even though he's happy for me, it's just a little tough on him. Uh, I grew up with a mother who emasculated my father financially and in every other aspect of his life, so... The thing we came here is like a lesson in what not to do. Yeah, I don't want something dumb like money to come between us. No, it won't. Let's just promise to figure this kind of stuff out before we get married. He's not a baby. I'm a grown man, and I made the bed. Now, where's my star? Oh, this heat is brutal. As someone from the tropical subcontinent of India, you should know that fanning yourself in a humid environment only raises your body temperature. I feel like I can't breathe, and I am tempted to crack you open and suck the air right out of your lungs. My struggle is emotional. Is it Amy? When I entered the field of string theory, I was a prodigy. I rose to a position of respect. Sheldon, you know what I think of when I'm scared? Voyager. By the time I was born, Voyager 1's mission was supposed to be over. It had seen Jupiter and Saturn and all their moons. India, for America, I was never more scared in my life. Whenever I feel that way, I think about how Voyager is still out there, going further than anyone ever thought it could. Don't leave! You can do this! Sheldon, is everything okay? It's too late for Kuthur Polly. Let's go! 11 minutes. That's longer than I thought. 11 minutes? Is that it? Okay, this is definitely the most fun thing we can do with the money. I've never done it on a big old pile of cash before. You mean I got it at Swipers Con, too. <laughs> so sorry I made you feel bad about the money stuff. It's okay. Talk about your birthday party. Ooh, laser tag, laser tag! <laughs>
You call yourself a friend? <laughs> Look at him. I was trying to help you, and at the first sign of trouble, you ran away, leaving me to fend off a family of rats. His statements of the obvious continue to annoy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's decent, actually. I didn't even deny it. You know, to be honest, 11 minutes, that's not long, is it? I understand that you was actually scared of rats, and, like, that's, that's totally fine. But, like, to leave him trapped down there as well. And you know what's funny is... He was considering going down into the mines, right, when he's claustrophobic. That's that's just crazy in itself. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's highly unlikely that that's ever going to be successful. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now, I actually be think it'd be really interesting actually going down into the mines and seeing how they do. Um, but to be honest, I think that... I don't know what he was saying there. Do you know, he's basically saying, look, you know, he used to be in... Um, Oh, literally string theory and he ascended up into being in a position of respect so to speak maybe like a, do you know what i mean uh, a, a person people look up to and now he's obviously changed and he's um you know he's back to square one and he's trying to find himself again and it's hard and it's a struggle and you know you can kind of relate to maybe like actors or, or sports people that do stuff like this you know what i mean so like say if you was a professional sportsman He's in the limelight from being 16, you know, in college all the way up and you had a successful, let's just say, basketball career. Once you retire at about 40, do you know what I mean? Like, you're kind of like redundant to, to many people now. And it's like, what do you do with your life? Do you know what I mean? All this time you've been in the limelight, you've been this star up until you have to retire, obviously, because you can't compete with the young people no more. You're back at square one. Do you just disappear and dwindle off into the, you know, into the sunset and no longer be on the news? Like, how do people handle that? You know what I mean? Or, or like, a, um, let's say Justin Bieber, in fairness to him, he's continues from when he was so young up until present day, at staying in the limelight, whether he wants that or not. You know what I mean? His career has been progress progressively steady. And, you know, sometimes he can have ups and downs, but he's always there. Where some people just get all the fame at like 16 and then at 20, they no longer have any good songs, any this, any that. And what do they do with their life? Do you know what I mean? They got an expectation of themselves that I'm going to be, I've got all these hit singles at 16. I'm, I'm going to be this best star ever. They ascend like Sheldon in the field up to a certain point, 20 or whatever he was. And then there's no progression no more. They're no longer needed. They're no longer there. And it's how mentally in yourself you deal with that. It's a struggle. That's why I was saying with Will Wheaton. Do you remember a couple of episodes back when he was talking to Penny about he was on this massive Star Trek show when he was younger and then he's obviously he's took career paths and had job roles that have been shit and this and that. But like he still seems like, I was saying, a grounded person, somebody that can look at the highs and look at the lows in their career and not dwindle that I used to be this big star and now I'm just an actor, if that makes sense, just a normal one. Like... He seems to have coped it really well. And I was saying I was impressed with him, to be open and honest. And that was for the TV show. But he was talking about his actual factual life at the same time. And, you know, it takes a lot on the mind. It really does. And it'd be interesting to see if actually Sheldon can stick to Dark Matter if he actually goes back to String Theory. Okay, that is going to wrap up today's episode. So it's interesting because obviously Penny being pretty successful in the, in the job now. You know, she's got decent income. She can financially support herself. She's no longer having to borrow money here and there of people. And... Uh, she's potentially getting a company car, so she sold the one that Leonard's gave her, and she's obviously got this little pot of money that was never hers, and um, she's kind of like, Leonard, thanks, you can have it back, and Leonard just keeps pushing it, and it's just back and forth the whole time. I was saying that basically Leonard should have took it. He shouldn't have been persistent in giving it her back. He should have took it and reinvested it into their relationship. I was saying on dates and movie nights and, you know, going spa days and vacations, but even one better, you know what I mean? He come in and was like, look, maybe we put it towards a wedding. I mean, that's, that is great. Honestly, I totally forgot that he was engaged and, mate, weddings are very expensive. So yeah, any free cash that's just come up from anything, bash it into that, do it. But then again, obviously they've gone over and they've spoken to Howard and Bernadette and how they deal with their financial situations and, you know, they had a little argument and Howard's gone off and Bernadette was saying, you know, uh, finances and whatever is a touchy subject with Howard. Mate, the reason it's a touchy subject, in my personal opinion, is because she makes him feel like he's not worth it. That's, that, honestly, I'm not saying she does that all of the time in their relationship, because I actually don't mind them together. But what I'm saying is, every time it's around that field, she's always quick to say, I'm better. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm the one that's got more money, and you're the one that borrows it. And, like, she, talking about allowances, talking about situations, talking about how much you spent here, how much you spent there. I remember one time I was watching um, one of the Kardashian shows that my sister had on. And uh, what was the dad called? Was he called Bruce? 
It, like, he went in and he, he bought, like, a helicopter or something, like a toy helicopter or whatever. It's like, for, I don't know, let's just say it was a grand, yeah? And then the mum, Chris, is it? She, she come in and she was, like, going on at him. What a waste of money you spent on that helicopter, blah, blah, blah. And then he's like, mate, you spend, like, five grand every day on a dress or, or this bullshit or that. And do you know what I mean? And I can't spend this. And it's like, because she's got all the money even though he's got money himself, because was he not an Olympian or something? Like, because she's earns earns the most, she's always like, what are you spending yours on? What a waste of money that is. What a waste of money that is. And making him feel bad. And it's like, that's how I feel like Bernadette does to Howard, personally. She always has to put in there that I make more money than you. You know what I mean? He even said it in then. He was like, mate, you don't have to say you make more. You could just say, yeah, in our relationship, obviously, you know, um, I earn more than Howard, but we split it evenly. Do you know what I mean? We do the percentage split, like I was saying. If one earns X, one earns X, do the split so that he pays 400, she pays 600. Yeah, okay, she's paying more, but in terms of wages, it's even percentage split out the wage, this and this. Um, but she, she has to say way more. You know what I mean? Why did you have to put the way in there to kind of like belittle him? So I don't know. I, that's just the way I feel. I always feel like when they talk about money, she makes him feel like he's bad and he's a kid or whatever, and like he has to ask for approval and she's always kind of looking down on him. But I don't feel like in any of their other situations that they're in as a relationship, only when it comes to money. So it kind of opened Leonard and Penny's eyes, to be honest, that, you know, you, it is a touchy subject and everybody deals with it different. And maybe that's something that you got to get sorted before you actually move in and live together because obviously... People don't like talking about finances. They don't. You know what I mean? Like, nobody likes knowing other people earn more and they have to be reliant or whatever. But at the end of the day, if you're going to be lifelong partners, it's got to be there. You know what I mean? You've got to be open and you've got to do it in the best way possible where you both have got money to waste on whatever you want to waste your money on. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you want to waste it on action figures, let him. Why? Because all the essential stuff has been paid for and that's his remaining balance of his own salary that he could do whatever he wants with that's my opinion anyway interested to know what your guys is do you reckon that bernadette's right in saying you're wasting money here and there and you know you should be doing it differently or do you reckon howard should be able to do whatever he wants in my personal opinion on the same side as me that once everything's paid for if it's his money he could do and enjoy it how he pleases very interested to know thanks for checking out today's episode hope you guys enjoyed it if you did please smash the like really helps out subscribe if you do and as always i'll catch you in the next one cheers guys